Hey, we're back. It's Miles Beckler, and this is part two with Dave Wooding from Integrate Pro. And real quick before I get back into it with Dave, because we've got some great stuff to cover here about the membership sites and building community, which is so powerful, uh, a little honesty. Part one ended abruptly because my computer was full of memory. It was full of these temp files. And just if you're putting out content yourself, know this is a part of the game, right? We think everything's easy. It looks easy when we publish. But behind the scenes, my computer stopped recording mid-conversation. I had to beg Dave to come back on again. And he was so willing to be gracious with his time. And I appreciate it. So this is the process to really get it out there. And Dave, thank you again. And welcome back. Miles, my pleasure. And you know it wasn't that hard to get me back on here. Come on. Very true. Very true. Um, so when we left off in the last one, we were getting to the idea of community. And building a community, at least a leg, or building your entire membership around community is a massive opportunity to grow your membership long term. Dave, all out of all of the memberships you've worked with, would you say the most successful ones have communities? And what do those communities look like in some of the more successful memberships you've worked with? Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, in my opinion, a community-based membership site uh, has longevity. So, you know, I, I look at there's a couple types of membership sites you can have, which is you can have strictly educational. You know, people come in, they take a course, they get certified. Um, your case is more of, I call it a drip membership, if you will. You know, you've got people that come in there and they've got content for in theory for the rest of their lives right so yeah they can be there community is uh based memberships are really a place where people can get together discuss talk be friends uh, get resources and you know the, the successful sites that i've seen that do that um uh have been around for a while and I, I'm, I'm thinking five plus years for this couple sites that i'm thinking of mostly that's um, huge a lot of times, you know, um, people come in there because of the content that's presented. There's something about the membership that's like that really calls out to them. It's what they want. Um, but if a membership site's done well, people are sticking around not just for the content, but really for the community, the, the group of friends they get, um, the people they can bounce ideas off, the resources that are there. Um, an example of an successful, successful membership site involved basically uh, combining providers, people who provide a service, with businesses that need a uh, uh, service, that service. Perfect, right? Match made in heaven. Absolutely. So that kind of stuff work, works really well when you have a membership-based site that has uh, a, a big community aspect. I love the idea of people come for the information, right? Your your value proposition on your sales material. And obviously you mentioned that there's a membership when you're selling your, or a community access, but really once they foster those relationships, they build their own support network, potentially um, accountability partners. It depends on obviously the membership. Uh, we have seen with our membership, having a community aspect has been amazing and people want to stay in just for the community. They love our product, but they love that feeling of having a network, even if it's just digital, which is really powerful. Yeah. You know, a lot of times I know for me, when I'm in a membership site that's got the community, it's like, okay, there's some people here that understand me. You know, <laughs> they get me. The world isn't as um, big as it used to be. Yeah. You've got the chance to connect to those people that are, are very much like ourselves, if you will. And being digital business owners who are all kind of like, you know, we're all in different areas. Like, like we don't have the water cooler chat that a lot of people in kind of regular jobs have. So that that's a huge point right there. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. one question I have, sorry for interrupting, but I'm really curious, like a lot of people are using Facebook groups right now. And they're kind of, all, some people are even building entire membership programs and businesses only on Facebook groups. It sounds like what you were talking about with uh, in part one with the client, he is on a forum based system. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious as to like, what is your preferred like uh, medium for a uh, successful kind of long term membership community? Yeah, so um, let me just rip a little bit on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Much as all of us do visit Facebook, you know, it is a great place to contact, um, cat videos, of course. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it is great. It's a great place to connect with other people. Um, however, let's not forget Facebook owns Facebook. 
So uh, God forbid you, uh, you do something wrong in Facebook. Hang on a sec. My cat's scratching just a sec. Yeah. Speaking of cat, speaking of cat videos, we've got one going on here. Um, and Dave mentioning this idea of, I think it's own the race course is kind of one of the concepts is when Facebook is the platform, if you're building your entire business there, like that means that you're at the will of Facebook. And if they decide for whatever reason, and if you read their terms, they can use any reason they decide to shut down your account, and turn you off, poof, it's gone because you don't technically own that race course. Right. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's a great place to, uh, I think, kind of build a business, yeah. leads, if you will, um, but really get them into your own environment. Also, any of the Facebook groups you may have been in, you may know sometimes it's hard to find what it is you want. It's kind of like a fire hose of information coming at you, um, searching around for information can be a challenge and so. for us we have one of the challenges with our membership is we do have a facebook group we try to forum our our target markets on the older side and facebook they it just the amount of engagement we get is great there but one or two kind of random memes that get some engagement can push down 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 all of the conversations because it's one little timeline and we have to be really aggressive at what we allow in because man, we can push down the great conversations for this rubbish that pops up and kind of, uh, kind of goes viral in some goofy way with cat videos. And it's like, it's not really a place. Our membership group is not a place for cat videos. So how in that own the race course, what do you see that foundation being like, what's a great way to build it? Like WordPress based with buddy press, or is there like a standalone forum system that you prefer? Yeah. So, um, I'll be honest, Miles, I don't know everything. I haven't sure. tried it, but I've definitely found solutions that work well and tend to stick with them. Um, because then we, my team and I dig deep into what works and then right. really get the subtleties uh, dialed in. But we use Zenforo and that's spelled with an X in front, by the way, not Z. Um, it is a form based software that has some really cool features. And I think we may have touched on it. I think after our video got clipped yesterday, but yep. you know, things like, um, you know, if you start a if you start a thread or, or you reply to a conversation in Zenforo, and for whatever reason you stop, I don't know, the cat interrupts you like just now, uh, you've got to do something, and you come back later. That that post that you've started will still be there. Um, real subtle, right? But what that means is there's no hassle factor. You know, of you using the system. Another great one, um, and you know, if you've got issues with people leaving your form. For whatever reason, you know, that's kind of a killer for membership sites. Um, <clears throat> if you contribute to a thread or you want to get notified about a thread, anytime somebody else comments on there, you get an email. Ah. It pulls you back into that membership site and it all happens automatically, right? Right. It just you know, the way it's configured. You don't get that kind of stuff readily with um, typically WordPress based um, forum sites, you know, what I'm trying to get across is the best in class type tools, um, will really serve you well. And that boosting of engagement from the forum level is huge because what it's going to do is gets people back in and gets them more comfortable with the system. Every time they publish fosters the communication and it kind of builds its own value in many senses of like, Hey, remember all the good stuff's here on the forum. Look how much engagement you're getting. Yeah, so this here's a little trivia for you. Um, one guy that's had a site for over five years now, he has over 9 million words in his forum. Wow. So if you had to go pay for 9 million words of content, you know, let's just say uh, a penny. Is that $90,000? You know, uh, yes, yeah. Don't worry about the math. It's something like that. <laughs> that's cross-eyed. I have no idea. Big numbers math. And it's a huge number for sure. Yeah, but he, he has this content that's been built over time from him, of course, and from his members so that when a new member comes and say, hey, I want to learn how to do this. Well, guess what? You hit the search fun function or the owner hits the search function and whammo, it's right there. So you're not having to uh, repeat yourself over and over and over again. You've built up a library of useful information. And sure, some of it will get dated. You archive it um, and then just replace it with new content that gets put in. So and, you're not just the contributor. You've got a team there working for you. And when you compare and contrast that to the, the Facebook group kind of system, like obviously it's clear people can go search. People can kind of carry conversations on over different topics over the course of months, weeks, years. That's really powerful. Yeah, definitely. So in this 
situation for this guy or for anyone, do you have clients who their entire membership is a Zen Foro forum? Like there's no other download, like everything, does everything live within the forum? Yeah, you know, um, yeah, I'll be honest. There are definitely a lot of people that do it that way. You know, you think, okay, I want to have a section for learning. Um, I want them to take a course. I want them to get certified. Um, you can't really do that in Zenforo, but typically the people that just use Zenforo, well, sure, they will just simply put in their content. They'll create a category for their class or classes and then make different threads and then make them sticky so they stay in order. They put in their videos. Um, they put up, they upload PDFs, um, their presentations, you know, people, one, one business I know what he does and I'll, that guy, sorry if I can't remember, I told you this yesterday. Or not. No worries. It actually wasn't successful originally. And I, the reason is because he had business owners in there that were competitors. So guess what? Nobody wanted to share. <laughs> Interesting. So, crickets. They're in there doing nothing. Nobody's sticking around because nobody's contributing. So he changed it kept the same membership set up using Zenforo, except now um, the focus is on monthly training that he provides to a business. So he will do a webinar. People can sign up that are members if they're, you know, or they can simply watch it in the forum. So that's been a, a kind of a game changer for him. He still has low engagement. In other words, people still don't come in there, chat it up or anything like that. However, guess what? They stick around a lot longer because they're getting value um, based on what they want. And if that isn't just a great like example of how building a successful business is all about adapting and paying attention to the data that's presenting itself and then getting deep, like why is no, you know, I bet he had, might've been a shower moment, might've been on a walk, who knows, like, but that like, why is nobody engaging? Like, oh my gosh, they're all scared to put out content because they think each other, oh, and when you have that aha moment, boom, there are your pivot aligns. And like, man, if that, that is how success happens online. Yeah. That's true. It was good to see that because it was like we were scratching our head at first like, oh, my God, you guys aren't doing anything in there. Because a lot of times uh, a membership is simply successful when you get people engaged. You know? Right. If you just What we found, and actually I'm basing this on data we did for a uh, particular membership that's been around for a while. So we looked, we compared people who in their first month actually made a post versus people who in their first month uh, didn't post. And I think it was like a two to three X difference in how long those people stuck around. So we implemented some real simple things like um, we put on the sidebar a banner that says, hey, if you, to get started, click here. And it basically takes them to the welcome section. And we only show it for people who haven't posted yet. So this is what I mean by di dig a, di diving deep into Zenforo. Right. Um, we figure, okay, let's tap into the database. We're going to go search, you know, who hasn't posted and we're going to display a banner specific to them and gets a call to action going. And then anyone who has, they don't need to see it. They've been engaged. Um, and then there's some other small things. And uh, one service we have implemented, it's like intercom.io. It's this little bubble thing at the bottom where you can chat. Yep. You can do the same thing. You can kind of nag you if you want. So we set up rules like, okay, if you've been there seven days, less than a month and haven't posted, have a thing pop up. Wow. Um, you know, there's kind of a fine line from being uh, between being annoying and, and just encouraging, right? So back to my don't be creepy. Also, don't be annoying, please. But understand that you, you can do a lot of stuff uh, to encourage people to engage. Yeah. And really, like, there's, there's going to be an 80 20 rule and like the 80% lurkers, the 20% posters, like that is going to be so, so don't kind of push someone too far, right? Because their lurkers will stick around as well. Um, I'd like to kind of ask about the actual stack side of it, um, or at least just the theoretical stack of running an entire membership business through a forum. Because I think it's a brilliant idea because you can do product delivery, you can get the conversations going, it keeps things organized, it's searchable. So when it's set up structured right, I can see that as being a huge value add that you own, which is really cool. Like, are you able to automate the process of sales page checkout to getting them their account set up? And then like, if they fail a payment, it automatically removes them. Is it Zenforo integratable at that level? Like we've done with kind of our WordPress based membership systems, et cetera. Yeah, it is. Um, they provide capability and then somebody like ourselves have to implement it. So Got API, it. that's a, kind of a word I'm going to throw out there. If you get it, great. If not, don't worry. Yep. Um, but it allows you to communicate with their software. Um, an example of a, a kind of a stack we use currently is the shopping cart. 
um, number of shopping carts right now. Probably the one we're kind of focusing on a lot, the one you're using, Miles, Thrive Cart, works really well. Um, they do have some development coming up that will help significantly. Um, I think the biggest thing with regards to our conversation is the dunning process, like what happens when a payment fails. Um, you can connect with outside services right now to improve that. But, you know, a setup might look like somebody makes a purchase. They go from your sales page, go to Thrivecart, make a purchase. Thrivecart sends out information um, wherever you want it to. Um, you would have a script, which we create, I know, um, that catches that information. And then it shares it with Zenforo. Um, one thing that Thrivecart does really well is that it automatically talks or can automatically talk to an email system, which is another key right. component of this whole thing. So, um, you know, Thrivecart, you make a purchase, they get added to active campaign, they get tagged as a customer, they get tagged as an active member, whatever. And then you can also um, send out an email that has their login details. Um, you could have asked for it on the checkout page, or we can automatically create that um, so that it all happens kind of automatically. Yeah. <laughs> and like you're saying, you know, if things happen, if somebody's, um, if they cancel their subscription or they failed the maximum number of times, uh, things go in reverse. Basically you can remove their access. And one little tip is don't ever delete them because if they've contributed, you know, you have some content to work with going forward. So, and plus they might come back. Right. 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 And they can pick up where they left off. So. That's brilliant. And and I think that's a great example for uh, the viewers watching. If you just heard him talk about that and you're like, whoa, what? Like APIs and websites talking to systems talking to, that's what integrations is. That's what Dave specializes in. And that's where I, when I was moving my membership, I was like, okay, I want these things to work together and play nice, but I have no idea how to build it. And that happens to be what you're good at. Um, so one more question on the forum side of things for anyone who's thinking like you got my wheels spinning to be honest with you here, but, um, like starting a forum, right? There's nothing eerier. Well, maybe there's one or two things in this world eerier than an empty forum with three posts and one piece of content. Um, maybe like a, an abandoned church in some, some weird ghost town would be eerier, but not many things. So how would someone go about, like, do you have an like even a conceptual idea? Like, fill it with a few courses, start a Genesis group of free members. Uh, like, any ideas for someone who wanted to initiate this to get like a? It seems like you got to kickstart it with some momentum somehow. Yeah, new traction. Yeah, good question. I'm glad you brought that up, and definitely have some thoughts on that. Um, you don't need you don't need much. Uh, you do need some persistence. Um, you've got to obviously have a way to get people to pay that kind of stuff. Get them into your email list, but inside the membership you really don't need much so in general you, you need to have some kind of welcome introduction area and really you want them to contribute there you want them to say hey my name is i'm this person whatever you absolutely want to get that going and then you want to have like a general discussion area where in theory everything's open-ended you know it's it's whatever your subject matter is where they can come and just ask general questions you might want to have an off off topic section too and then kind of the minimum is simply to have something that they can consume, uh, whether it be like a course of five videos or something that they can go through. It doesn't mean they have to check it off and say, I did that, but it's, you know, something that you've promised that when they show up, here's what they get. It's available. Yeah. And then you can have uh, conversations around that. So a welcome area, uh, basic uh, information that they can consume, and then uh, maybe an off topic area. And then let me mention one thing I think, uh, you know, this is somebody discovered and we've implemented uh, is you can have um, private conversations with people. So there's always this messaging service inside of Zen Forum and a lot of forums. Right. That's good. Um, but what's even better is you can have uh, sections of the forum that are kind of private. So in other words, Miles, you're in my forum, you start a conversation with me in a private section of the forum. It's, it's different than a private message, um, but it allows me to coach you or whatever one-on-one. -on -one. Ah. Well, wait a minute. You know, the whole point of a forum is to do one-to-many. Well, you can also offer one-to-one, -one, but keep it in a place that only you and I can see our conversations, but I as the admin can see everybody's conversations. And the point is you control the schedule. You know, you don't show up 24-7. You come in your time of day, you respond to people. Um, 
you know, so you're not getting on a phone call at whatever hour of the day. You've got a chance to reply to people's private conversations uh, when you want. And that can be a game changer with regards to pricing. If previously, for instance, let's say you're a coach and you're doing one-to-one -one and you're charging X amount of dollars, you can, I'm going to say, do the same thing, maybe at a lesser rate, but you can certainly handle uh, a lot more one-to-one -one conversations in that kind of environment really leveraging technology. And when you were mentioning that, man, for coaches and consultants, that's absolutely brilliant because you have the, like, here's the ideas that we're going to cover. And then you have your individual conversations for how does that apply to me? Because that's what everybody's biggest thing is. I put out all these free courses on Facebook or on how to build a funnel. And the question always comes back, well, but what about me? Because we all feel like we're different. And in some senses, there's always intricacies, right? But at the same time, the general ideas. Hmm, that's a really interesting concept. Yeah, so, and, you know, the thing is, you, um, you're going to see common themes in, among private conversations. And once you right. see that, you bring that conversation or that insight back to the public part of your forum. Of course, you don't name names or anything like that, but you say, hey, in general, when people have this issue, here's what I recommend. Right. And because if you see multiple people asking the same type of question. And then additionally, you know, it's like you have office hours effectively. You show up. You've got, let's say, 100 people doing private coaching with you. You spend a couple hours in there and you just go boom, 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 boom versus having to take a break, wait for somebody to get on the phone with you or check an email. It's all right there, right in front of you so you can deal with it as you want. It makes it on demand, essentially, to where you're able to go kind of whenever, when the time's right for you, bang it out, get on to the next. And really, I think that, that so much time is wasted on phone calls. And like, it, it's cool, right? We're building relationships and whatnot. But when people are forced to type out their, their question, their problem, oftentimes they'll spend three, four, five times the amount of time to really like, they'll write it out and they're like, oh, but that's not it. And they'll sometimes correct themselves and they'll get it really focused. And that can really speed up the entire process right there as well. Yeah, a cool little tool that I'm using. I think you're aware of Loom. 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 Go to getloom.com. Um, it's a Chrome extension. You, you basically can do screen shares. You make a screen share video and you just drop it in an email. You can do the same thing inside Zen4. Just drop it in there. So if you want to give a verbal response or a, you know show what's going on in the screen, you can do it. I mean, it's instantaneous practically. You know, I know Russell Brunson's high, high, high end mastermind, which is like $30,000 a year, I believe, maybe 25. Um, you essentially get the the ability or right to vox him, which is a recording. You do up to one minute recording. So you boop, boop, and you leave him a voice question and he'll answer you back. But like this setup actually sounds way more beneficial long term. And it kind of puts the the ability to use that kind of vocal response and video response and just a quick message um that's really powerful yeah yeah so, well any last um any last ideas anything that we haven't covered on i really like the idea of building community another thing on this is start with one course get your coaching going pull out the common questions and build next week's course or next month's course based on the feedback you're getting. And literally it can grow organically and you're letting your users and your one-on-one -on -one coaching clients who are paying you guide the content that you're creating. So they become your researchers, but they're not researchers. They're like real world applications. So it's all very real world stuff. When you onboard new people, they get all of that content in the future. I can see how something like that can grow to kind of like a hero product to use maybe a catchphrase you've heard before. <laughs> Sorry, I blanked. What was the... A hero product, like a one location, that one hero product that is the big product that that's it. Like that's the one thing you offer is that forum because it's got everything yeah. on it. Yeah. Um, and then I guess one thing I do want to mention too is sure. you want to make sure your members always have something to look forward to, right? And a good way to do that is simply having either a monthly call, monthly webinar, something that's coming out in the future so that there's always that incentive to be there uh, in the future. Right. You know, something like that, that something's valuable. And again, that gets driven by what's going on in your forum. What are people interested? Yep. Feedback. And, yeah, Miles, let me just go. <laughs> I forgot about this. But, you know, prior to getting people in the forum, you can really kind of ask what they want, right? Find out, kind of segment them, find out what they want, somehow bucket them, put them into your email autoresponder and tag them as interested in this subject. And then guess what? When they join, ideally point them to something in your membership that's related to what they expressed interest in. Absolutely. Like 
a quiz funnel on the front end that gets them to say, hey, I'm interested in X, Y, or Z. That right. somehow tags as they go through when they purchase. That tag remains on them. Your system looks for that tag and says, oh, this person was tagged with Z. Let's make sure the first email points them to the part in the forum that covers that topic. All happens behind the scenes automatically. There's there's a fair amount of work to, to set it up and think about abstractly what those are and to get that dialed. But man, once that's working, people will have a almost custom ex onboarding experience in an automated fashion makes them feel very welcome. And you might be hanging out on your mountain bike in a trail somewhere. In the foothills. In, in the foothills, absolutely. Um, I do have one other question for this since I got you and I'm like, this is really kind of turning like, okay, I'm, I'm seeing something maybe here. Um, what do you think about having a free level in a membership? Do you think it's better to just go all paid and focus 100% on paid people? Does it make sense to have like a free level, a paid level and a one-on-one -on -one coaching level to have kind of like the bronze, silver, gold type thing? Um, any ideas, tips? I mean, I know everything's kind of possible yeah, multi-level is good um and it's a little level a little another level of complex complexity not that bad you can definitely segment the form up and say gold members get access to everything silver get access to these two things not difficult to do gotcha um, a little torn on on the free part you know i don't think you really want people that have not paid something and by paid i mean a commitment and and the one place I would really consider having free members is if it's on the back end of something that they've bought. Um, you might be an affiliate for a product. So this is a great way to go, right? There's a high-end product or you know, they bought something through your affiliate link. Well, give them free access to your membership area. And you know, like we're talking about different levels, maybe give them free access to that specific area in your form so that they can get more training, get whatever. And then maybe, just maybe, show them parts of the other form with the option to upgrade sometime in the future. So you're giving value up front and you're also letting them know what's available at a cost um, as a way to you know, get them interested in what you're doing. But honestly, I, I think just straight off free, it's gonna give you a lot of work. Yep. And if it will convert, it's like, well, okay. <laughs> And potentially spammers uh, could come in on free, which is obviously just a nightmare to deal with once you get kind of known as a place people can go spam. I love what you're talking about using maybe a bonus for a high ticket affiliate as kind of an entrance point that would be free to them theoretically because if they're already going to buy product X that's $2,000 and you get a 50% commission, them – Right. going for your link because your link will get them access to your forum that's private and it's it's only for people wow that that is an extra level of leverage that could really grow an affiliate side and then you're getting them to contribute content on the forums which when you start selling it for 37 a month or 97 a month whatever it is you have this kind of like ecosystem and yet everybody's got some skin in the game right exactly Really powerful stuff, Dave. Man, I'm I'm just like so thankful. Like you got my wheels spinning over here, which is always fun. Um, got to keep myself focused for sure. But um, I do appreciate it. Uh, how can people learn more about you if someone's wanting to set this stuff up? They want they want the result. They don't have the time or energy, but they've got a budget. They've got a few grand that they're like they're ready to invest in their business to build the right kind of infrastructure. How can they learn more about you? Um, integratepro.com is probably the best place right now. And um, in general, before we build these types of sites, we like to speak to the people who are uh, who want them built because, you know, you're going to be spending a, a good chunk of time and effort and money to get this going. So we want to make sure we understand your needs. So you might have to root around on my site right now to find a way to contact me, but I'll make it a little more obvious shortly after this video goes live. And that's the benefit of being, um, you're, you're busy, you got plenty of work, you're doing great work. And that's, I think that's probably what I appreciated most in working with you, Dave, was I, I reached out to several people before we got on the phone when I was considering this move and two people responded back, cool, here's my payment pay $300 and we'll get on the phone. Uh, one guy, I think it was $300 was like literally to just have a conversation to see if he and I were a fit. It, he wanted $300 up front. You were willing to hop on the phone and just kind of like, you're like, Miles, I, let's just see if we're a fit, right? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, and to me that that's such, there's such integrity there, but also it just shows that your goal is to help people achieve their goal. And if that's not something you can help, like that, that's awesome that you kind of run things in that fashion. Yeah. So Miles, I'll be honest. I'm a little, uh, 
for my own greedy reasons, I do that because I realize reputation really matters, right? It does. So if I hosed you and Miles Beckler, who's got a bazillion fans, finds out that Dave hosed Miles, well, guess what? I'm screwed. Um, I do it for more than that. You know, I definitely want people to get the, make sure we can, we're a fit for what you want. You know, not everybody is, is a good fit. Right. And I try to be honest right up front on that. So we, you know, we make sure we understand what you're trying to accomplish, what resources you have, time frame, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, there, you know, I, I am motivated to do the right thing on that for sure. And that's brilliant. And you've been, you've done great by Melanie and I, and we love what we've created. You've got me thinking about some next level stuff that we'll be having a conversation on, uh, hopefully somewhere in the forest, hanging out, walking, hiking or something, if that's possible. But I really thank you again for your time, Dave. Thanks for coming on twice. That's pretty spectacular. All right. Thanks a lot, Miles. Appreciate it. And thank you for watching. If you have any questions for me, hit me in the comments below. Obviously, if you enjoyed this, and I, I can't see how you wouldn't, give it a thumbs up here in YouTube because that's how we get the reach out on this video, which is the only goal of this channel is just to get these messages out. I will put Dave's website below. It's integratepro.com, but I'll have that in the description. And any questions for him, you can reach out there. But again, any questions for me, hit me in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to connecting with you on the next video. Be well.